Hello and welcome to the first edition of Flora on Food, our new cooking channel. This is our new venture because I want to show you what is possible with a two ring hob and a gas grill. Anything that you'd normally get uh, from a camp shop or that you probably got in your garage or your dad's garage. Uh, we're on location today in our home county of Shropshire. We're up in the hills with beautiful views. Uh, today we're going to make chicken and bacon risotto with Shropshire blue cheese. Salt and pepper rating, two out of five. Here's the ingredients list you will need. Kettle is boiling, ready for some stock, and I've got a pan warming ready to go too. So first of all, I'm going to use a leek as well as an onion for extra flavour. So we're going to give that a quick chop. There we go, proper professional. I'm going to save that for later, we don't need the whole one. And then for the onion. Now, I'd like to do a little shout out at this moment. Uh, to Paul Onions, thank you very much for your um, lovely comments you made the other day on our uh, last van uh, video that we created. Um, just really nice words, so thank you. And this is a shout out to you, and I'd like to dedicate this risotto to you as well. So thank you very much. Right then, I'm going to show you how to professionally slice, dice an onion. So this is how we do it in the trade. So just in, in half, ends off and peel it. Slicing downwards, reasonably thinly. About five mil. Three slices horizontally. Not all the way through so the onion kind of stays together. And then down. Olive oil into your pan. Oh, it's not even open. Let's get that again. <laughs> there we go. The pan's been on for a while, so it should be nice and hot now. So I'm going to add my onion and leek in. picked up a little bit but it should be fine uh, we're just going to sweat these off in a little bit of oil until they become translucent we don't want any color on it though a uh, little hack here for garlic i very rarely use fresh garlic anymore um, i find especially with van life there isn't much point in using fresh garlic and a crush because you've got to wash it all up so i've got this really good garlic paste you find it in the supermarkets um, by the tomato puree it's just as good um, and you can just keep it in the fridge or in the cupboard um, less washing up less fat fridge that's one hack that I'd like to share with you so a clove is just under a teaspoon so now we're going to add the aborio rice it's a shorter grain and it releases more starch making more of a creamy consistency when you're making risotto so there's just under 200 grams here it's about 100 gram per person we say really so that's going to add to that. And we're going to cook that out. Let the each grain of rice get coated in the oil that you've cooked the garlic and onions and leek in. I'm going to leave that for a minute. While that's continuing to cook, I'm going to make about a pint of chicken stock with boiling water. Um, for risottos, you can use any stock really, as long as it's a light colour one. I'd avoid using beef, just because it's very brown and it'll discolour the risotto and make it look brown. So this is just one stock cube in here. Make sure it's well mixed. I'm going to add the knob of butter to this now. Let that get nice and hot. And melt it in. And now we are going to deglaze the pan. Uh, normally I'd use white wine, but we had some rosé open. It, you only need to add less than a glass, really, just a swig. We're just going to deglaze the pan and start cooking the rice. Um, 
and start making the risotto basically. So come in on this. So I'm just going to add a bit of seasoning, a bit of cracked black pepper, we're going to add our stock a little bit at a time which allows the rice to soak it up slowly and to get that creamy texture of risotto. They say ladle at a time but not all van lifers will have a ladle. Uh, we're going to cook the chicken and bacon that goes into it separately just because I want really crispy bacon and cooked chicken that doesn't disintegrate in the risotto so I'm going to fry it in a separate frying pan on the other hob. Adding more stock now, uh, the first lot had reduced. Um, and so in the other frying pan, we'll start cooking the bacon and chicken now. Drop of oil. The trick is to get your oil and your pans really hot when cooking, pretty much anything really, um, which seals in, like for instance, the chicken, it's gonna seal in the juices and the flavor of the chicken, and it stops things from uh, sweating in its own pan. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to our stock. We need just over a litre in total. So basically it'll be two jugs worth of stock for this. And in total, it's gonna to take about 15 minutes to cook. At this stage is when we need to add more stock. The liquid has all been soaked up by the rice. Just a ladleful. Can be quite time consuming, but you don't wanna rush it. Going to add our bacon, just watch the facts, it might spit a little bit. This is smoked bacon lardons, if you can hear me through the sizzle. More stock into the risotto. I'm going to add some more salt, just add a little taste and it's a bit lacking. I'm going to go more pepper as well. So that's all my stock used up. If we need to use any more, we'll just use a little bit more water and let it cook out. And the bacon is getting nice and crispy. It takes a bit longer than it does at home on a camp stove, if I'm honest, but you've just got to learn to be patient a bit more. Right then, so the bacon's nice and crispy. I'm going to tip that out onto a plate. We're going to use the same pan to cook the chicken. Pan back on the heat. Uh, I'm going to season the chicken with salt and pepper. The thinner you slice your chicken, the quicker it will cook, which you've got to be cautious of how much gas you've got when you are on the road. You've got to be careful of how much gas you're using to cook, say, one meal. So this is going to take us 15 minutes, which isn't too long, but there is quicker options if you're low on gas. This is where we're at with the risotto. The grains of rice is starting to go slightly more white than opaque. So the chicken is nearly there, uh, it's been in the frying pan, I've just turned it over a few times. Um, one thing that I'm going to show you is how to check the temperature of the food on the inside. As a chef, I know that it's got to be 75 degrees or over in the middle. So when I don't have my trusty probe, I use a knife, I stick it into the centre of the piece of meat that we're cooking. It could be a piece of chicken, it could be especially chicken on the bone, you've got to be very careful. Um, and then test it on my wrist just to see how hot it is. If it makes it you flinch slightly, that means it's ready. 
But with this chicken, you could just cut inside, cut it in half and see if it's ready or not. So no, they're not quite ready yet. So this is the last bit of stock soaking into the risotto. I've had to add a little more water to it. And I'm going to show you a few chefy tricks on how to lift it to another level, as they say. Chevy tip number one is add a little bit of lemon zest and a little bit of lemon juice to your risotto. Not too much to overpower it, but it just adds some, I don't quite know what it does to it, but it just adds something slightly different, especially with the amount of salty ingredients we're using. And a little squeeze of lemon. In we go. I'm adding the bacon back to the chicken, just to reheat that through again. And I've turned both pans down to low. Yeah, lovely. So, risotto, this is where we're at so far. So just testing your rice now, just before we add bits to it. You want it light pasta al dente, which translates to, to the teeth or to the bite. So you don't want it too overcooked and too squidgy. You don't want it too hard that it's going to be not very pleasant to eat. That's bob on. Ready to add the bits to it now. Chopped herbs, fresh chopped herbs. This is fresh flat parsley. Scrunch it up into a ball and make the smallest movements with your knife up and down to get a fine, fine chop on it. Run your knife through it a few times. There we are. So, in we go. Don't want to cook it out too much with the fresh herbs because you'd lose the flavour. I'm going to turn my chicken and bacon off. Seeing as though we are in Shropshire, I am going to be using some Shropshire Blue. But as I did my research the other night, it's not even from Shropshire originally. Uh, it was from Inverness in the 1970s. And as a marketing stunt to make it sell better, they renamed it from Inverness Blue to Shropshire Blue. I'm just going to take the rind off. I'm only going to use a part of it because it is quite strong. And I'm going to just crumble it into the hot risotto. And as it melts, it's going to make like a blue cheese sauce. So now it's plating up time. I'm going to add a little bit of bacon and the chicken into the risotto now. I'm going to leave a little bit for a chefy garnish. And there we have it. Sprinkle of parsley. And we have Shropshire Blue Chicken and Bacon Risotto Al Fresco. So thank you for joining us on our first cooking adventure. I'd like to know what else you want me to do. Challenge me, uh, recipes or meals that you'd like, or give me an ingredient, pretend we're doing Ready Steady Cook. I want to show you what is possible with a two-ring burner. I'm looking forward to using a barbecue. I'm looking forward to being in different locations, especially near the sea. I'm um, looking forward to fish on the barbecue, things like that. So yeah, stay tuned. Um, I'd like to use this occasion to thank my cameraman who's already eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Up to scratch. Yeah, lovely. Uh, yeah, join us for more and enjoy.